Greetings traders and welcome back. My name's Chris and I'll be your host today as we slide into another survival guide. Today we're going to be covering the subject of fundamental analysis. Everyone knows that the accuracy of an investor is going to determine their success rate, but how they come to that accuracy is the question. There's technical analysis and there's fundamental analysis. Today we're going to be focusing on the fundamental side of things. We're going to explain exactly what that is as well as some of the top strategies that we can do when employing fundamental analysis. But without further ado, let's dive on into it. Here we go. Fundamental analysis is the most popular method of choice for investors seeking to gain an edge or some insight into an investment decision they might be considering and making. But what is fundamental analysis? By the definition, fundamental analysis is an accounting and financial methodology that is focused on identifying key metrics about a particular company and valuing its health by looking at its financial statements. To put it simply, the aim of fundamental analysis is to provide a precise estimation of a particular security's intrinsic value. So the key word is focusing on the intrinsic value. That's what we're doing with fundamental analysis. That means that we're using and analyzing all relevant data to come up with a number that us as investors can compare with the security's current price to decide whether it's either undervalued or perhaps overvalued. So in other words, this means we're trying to give ourselves a solid idea on whether or not we have a good investment choice because the value of something on the surface is not matching up with the value of something underneath the surface. Fundamental analysis has also been around for quite some time, just like technical analysis. A man by the name of Benjamin Graham is often referred to as the father of fundamental analysis. He published a book in 1934 that is still a good read today called Security Analysis. That book warns investors against the dangers of speculative behavior and encourages them to focus on, and them being traders, it encourages traders to focus on the intrinsic value of a security. Fundamental analysis versus technical analysis ready, fight! Just kidding. But between the two of them, what are the differences that we have going on here? Well, on the fundamental side, we see right off the bat for the function, it says mostly suitable for investing. This is referencing the idea that fundamental analysis does tend to be a favorite for those that are looking for long-term investing in terms of like, in terms of stocks, etc., things along those lines. Whereas technical analysis is more common with traders that are more interested in day trading. Now, this is obviously just a broad generalization, even though it is based on some fact, but that is the case. It does not mean that if you are a fundamental analysis loving trader, you can't use it to day trade. That's not what we're saying here. Just the, do, the nature of how we analyze the intrinsic value of something doesn't necessarily help in a short term asset like trading, say, oil futures. But who are they used by? Well, with fundamental analysis, we have long-term investors. This goes back to what we were talking about. Long-term investors looking to find the intrinsic value of an asset. Whereas with technical analysis, we have traders interested in short-term price movements trying to make gains on a quick breakout, for example. The objective is to define whether the asset is undervalued or overvalued with fundamental analysis. That's that intrinsic setting that we were talking about, that intrinsic nature of it. But with technical analysis, we're looking to time the perfect moment for entering or exiting a trade. It's that more zoomed in style where we're trying to catch the move right before it happens instead of invest in something that we anticipate will continue to climb over the next few years. The field, of the field of application is going to be mostly stocks, but also works more for bonds, derivatives, as well as other things in that category as well. Basically, long-term buy and hold style of trading, right? Swing trading could be somewhat categorized into this nature, but realistically, it is even going to be longer than regular swing trading. It's going to be that long-term investment category that fundamental analysis works well with. But with technical analysis, it says works with all asset classes, and that is because you are just analyzing the historical price data of something, and everything has some type of historical price data that can be analyzed. When we go down to what is taken into account between the two of them, that varies here. With the fundamental analysis side of things, 
We have all kinds of information from financial statements, balance sheets, press release, estimates, and various other things as well. But when it comes down to technical analysis, it's pretty cut and dry. We're basically analyzing price and trading volume. That's about it for technical analysis. The analyze period that we're taking a look at when we're putting our analysis in here with fundamental analysis, like we were discussing being longer term goals, we actually are looking for long periods to analyze as well, generally speaking. Whereas with technical analysis, we're usually analyzing shorter periods, you know, hours, days, weeks, these things along those lines. With the history of this, this is just more of a fun fact, not necessarily something that we need to cement in our brains, but fundamental analysis has been around since 1934, like we mentioned with our friend Mr. Graham. And with technical analysis, it's actually been around a little bit longer, naturally just by the way that we analyze things based on a historical pattern. Of course, it has existed longer than the ability to analyze reports, right? Fundamental analysis can be broadly categorized into two main approaches. The first one is the top-down approach. And our friend here, see his head is, is down, his, his, top is, his top is down. That's why that's, that's, that's funny. So we have the top-down approach. And the idea here is we focus on the macro factors, the bigger ones. We see it goes economy, sector, industry, and company, right? This means we focus on things like the state of the economy, GDP forecast, unemployment level, interest rates, etc. By taking all these factors into account, the investor tries to make a forecast about the broader picture. The overall direction of the economy and the general market trends is the goal that we're focusing on. Once we have our prediction of the overall economy and general market trends, this gives us an overall awareness of the sectors and industries that will be thriving during those types of scenarios. So once we analyze the economy, once we analyze the particular sectors that the asset is that we're interested in on, this is how we get an idea of whether or not we should be interested in buying or selling or doing nothing at all. The idea is to narrow down the investment horizon by starting from the global picture up at the top and working our way to the bottom, down finally making our way to the company that we're interested in on. When talking about the top-down approach, we discussed that it means we're using the broader picture and then working our way smaller. That means we need to pay attention to those macroeconomic factors. A good thing for us to focus on would be things like GDP projections for the US as well as the global market, the outlook for the interest rates of whatever it is that we're looking at, or just the currency in general, the bond price and yields, the inflation levels, the prices for different commodities that are involved in whatever it is that we're, once again, interested in trading on. All of these things are good examples of places to get started with. If we were to use interest rates as an indicator, for example, a good sector to look at would be paying attention to the financial sector as a bank's primary income does come from interest rates or using those interest rates on loan production, we can see that there's a correlation between the interest rate changes as well as the yields for a 10-year treasury yield as far as the graph is going to show. We see that during the period where the orange line is representing the interest rates, as interest rates fall, we're also seeing the yields fall. As interest rates rise, we're also seeing the prices rise. During periods where we rose steeply, the market also rose steeply. During periods where we fell sharply, the market also fell sharply. So there is a strong correlation here, and this is just to give us some ideas of other things that we could pay attention to. When it comes to commodity prices, an easy example is to look at the price of oil and the companies involved in the oil production business. We have a strong positive correlation. The trend in the oil prices is almost always willing to tell us about the direction of the share price of oil related companies. In this example here, in this picture on the graph, we can compare the price of crude oil futures contracts being the blue line to the share price of Exxon Mobil Corporation, which we know is XOM. So as the share price rises, what do we see with the futures contracts? The futures contracts are also rising and spiking. There's a very strong correlation here. They almost mirror each other quite comfortably all the way along. When we have a sharp fall, we have a sharp fall. When we have a sharp rise, we have a sharp rise. Very, very similar correlation here. Once again, this is just by paying attention to a commodity as well as some of the companies that are related to that particular commodity. We can translate this example over a million times into a bunch of other ways as well when we analyze a top-down approach. 
Then we have the bottom-up approach, which inverts the top-down approach. We actually are going to start on a micro level and work our way up, hence the name bottoms up in the air there. So as the name suggests, obviously we're starting from the bottom and we're working our way to the top. We start on the micro level and work our way to the macro level. The investors that prefer this methodology believe that the overall state of the economy may not be indicative of the performance of a particular stock, hence the reason they favor it in this direction. They think that some of the shares may have a high investment potential, although being a part of a stagnating sector or industry, so they prefer to check it out this way. Bottom-up fundamental analysts usually focus on corporate earnings, financial statements, balance sheets, press releases, letters to investors, supply and demand estimations, goods and services offered by the business, as well as other company-specific sources of information, just to name a few. Both types of fundamental analysis have their pros and cons. An example would be, with the top-down approach, investors can focus on identifying the well-performing sectors and industries. That way, they can narrow down the universe of potential opportunities and quickly shift between the analysis of a specific company or another company. Bottom-up analysts, on the other hand, get a clear understanding of a particular company and its operation. The truth is, no approach is simply better than the other, it just depends on the situation as well as what you prefer. Some of the ways that we can go about the bottom-up approach can be classified as the qualitative fundamentals. This means we want to pay attention to things like the business model and competitive advantages that a particular company might be offering as well as pay attention to the management structure that the company has, and maybe as well as how happy the employees at that company are. And then we also have the power of the brand. This is important to pay attention to as well because this indicates the staying power that a particular company already has over the market, such as Coca-Cola, a domineering name. There are actually equations that we can use when taking a qualitative approach that will allow us to add a hard number or value to a company so we can better compare it to other options out there. If we want to analyze the earnings per share, otherwise known as the EPS, that is a simple equation of EPS equals the net income minus the preferred dividends divided by the end of period common shares outstanding. That's it. Minus up top, divide down below. Then we also have price to earnings known as the P slash E. Our P and E is going to be our market value per share divided by our earnings per share. Nothing too hard there. And then we have our price to book. Our PB is going to be the market price per share just divided by the book value per share. Once again, a relatively simple equation. Keeping it going, if we want to measure the return on equity, that is going to be equivalent to the net income divided by the shareholder equity. Then we have the beta. The beta is going to be the covariance divided by the variance. And then we have our projected earnings growth known as PEG, which is going to be easily done by price divided by EPS divided by the EPS growth. Then finally, we have our dividend yield, which is going to be equivalent to the annual dividend divided by the share price. So as you can see, these equations are nothing more than a simple subtraction and or division problem. In conclusion, fundamental analysis is something that you'll find in many successful traders' arsenals out there. It's not the same exact thing as technical analysis, but both of them give a trader a potential edge over the market in allowing them to have an expectation of where a particular value might be going. And if you get good enough with it, remember, we always have the Gauntlet Mini, which can give you a chance to be a funded trader if you are good enough and think you have what it takes to pass the test. If you're not convinced on fundamental analysis, just take a look at Warren Buffett's net worth. And then get back to me. But until next time, everybody, please make sure you click the like and subscribe button below, and I will see you in the next one. Over and out. Pshh.